you're going to want to watch this video all the way to the end so you can get all the secret locations to get iron and gold in Act 1 of Ghost of Tsushima so you can upgrade your katana. Subscribe. We do tips and tricks for the Ghost of Tsushima. Gold is the ingredient that you can't get uh, for your higher level upgrades of the katana. And iron is also that. You can get steel and supplies by farming chests very easily. So you should have tons of steel and supplies. So that's not the problem. The problem is getting gold and iron. And so if you go to all the bases and all the vendors, you should be able to upgrade your katana to level 6. And level 7 is the highest level. And you should also be able to upgrade your Tonto, which is your assassination dagger, to the highest level. And the Tonto upgrades make a big difference in its power, too. And those only take iron. They don't take gold. But all the upgrades for the Katana take 13 gold and by my count there's only 10 gold in act one so you have to go to act two and clear some giant bases to get more gold as a reward all right so the first basic thing that you want to do to get iron and gold is to get iron you want to clear out all the mongol camps and bases in uh, the lower island izihura so the act one island the act one map you want to get all those bases i'll go through those in just a second but then there's also some secret locations that also have iron and gold now you get gold from taking out the four big bases and when you when you hover over them before you've taken them over they tell you you get gold when you blow them up so not before you've cleared them will you get gold you don't loot the gold you get it from completing the clearing of the giant base. So stay tuned to the end. I'm going to go through every one of those bases. But first I'm going to talk about the locations that you wouldn't think of. With those bases, those are the kind of like house shaped symbols. Uh, those are the big bases and they're going to be in red until you clear them and they'll be gray after you clear them. And then the, the camps and bases, the smaller ones, are going to be diamonds. Symbols, that is squares on their sides. Little diamonds in red uh, if you've not taken them over and they'll be gray after you've cleared them okay and here are the secret locations right so there are three iron vendors and two gold vendors right they do not restock their inventory they are all trappers but not all trappers stock iron and gold most trappers will not stock iron or gold ever in act one the first one is the trapper at the refugee camp on the west side of the island kind of northwest its nearest fast travel is the stone dragon shrine on the west coast and the trapper there has 10 iron and no gold and it's 30 per iron piece so you pay him 300 for 10 pieces then he's out he never has any more. There's the trapper at Asimo Bay. You must clear Asimo Bay. I think it's actually a side mission after uh, you've gone through the, uh, the the Straw Hat Ronin quest line in the main quest. There's a side quest to rescue the elders, and that's when you clear Asimo Bay. And it will be a place where there'll be vendors. And one of those vendors is the trapper with 10 iron and one gold the gold costs 300 won't regenerate i bought it won't get it back uh won't get any more gold and then there's the trapper at komatsu forge uh he's got 10 iron and one gold and you have to clear komatsu forge uh, as part of one of the main quests then there's this secret stash of 10 iron on this island called the sibling rocks its closest fast travel is the pillar of honor and it's uh, on the kuda grasslands on the east coast of the act one island so you kind of look off the the cliff and you go to the south and I'm, that's what i'm showing you is the the staircase there's a staircase down to the beach and then you kind of go around so 
you go from the Pillar of Honor, you kind of go south. There's a staircase down. There's also another staircase down to the north, but that involves some jumping. So there's two good ways to get down there to the sibling rocks from the Pillar of Honor in the Kuta Grasslands on the east coast. Then uh, you go up to the top of the hill of the Sibling Rocks Island, which you can't miss, uh, which is right off the point, off the Pillar of Honor, where the Pillar of Honor fast travel is. And you should get a bunch of supplies, like bamboo, you would, I think, too. But I got 10 iron, which is pretty good stash. Okay, so I found another stash of 10 iron near the Tangled Crossroads in Asimo. It's north of the Tangled Crossroads. Uh, It's actually closest to a Pillar of Honor, uh, but the Pillar of Honor is way above it. It's hiding behind these rocks, and it has a stash of all kinds of other goodies, too. But I think you're going to be most interested in the iron. Uh, there's another secret stash I got at the Lost in Sea, Lost at Sea side quest. You go on a ship, and it was on the first boat in the bedroom. I got three iron. And then uh, when I was ranging around, 140 meters north of the castle lookout hot springs that is the castle where kotu khan threw you off the bridge right where last quest of the act one is going to take place so it's like 450 meters south of that 140 meters north of castle lookout at hot springs there was a cart with mongols defending it that had six iron in it right and so if you Add all that up, that was it all was enough iron to do six katana upgrades out of seven and all the Tonto assassination weapon upgrades. I had 35 iron left to go, which I needed 65 more iron to get the final katana upgrade. And I also needed three more gold. You need a total of 13 gold to upgrade the katana. I was able to get eight from the camps two from the vendors, and then I was short, right? And the only way to solve that is to go to Act 2 and then upgrade your katana. It's kind of crazy that you could upgrade 6 sevenths, 85% upgrade your sword in Act 1. Like, I couldn't imagine doing that on The Witcher. The Witcher, you you know, in Act 1, your sword is like one-fourth of what your sword is in Blood and Wine. In this game... You can totally upgrade almost everything right away. Of course, when you progress to Act 2 and 3, you will get new armor sets, but you're not going to get a new sword. The only new weapon that I'm aware of is the blowgun that you'll get after Act 1. But you basically have all your weapons, and you can upgrade all your weapons fully, except the katana in Act 1, including the kunai. Actually upgrade both the longbow and halfbow all the way uh, because the the constraint with those two uh, is you can easily farm yew wood and bamboo, but you can't farm waxwood. And even though there's only five shrines that I know of in Act 1, there have been some shrines where I've gotten two waxwoods, that there was like an extra waxwood tree that could be looted. If you go to all the shrines, then you probably could... In Act 1, you could probably do both the half bow and long bow, all those upgrades too. And then you're farming the chest, so you have unlimited supplies, unlimited steel. And then you're farming the predator hides, so that's unlimited too. Uh, so the only things you can't farm are iron and gold. All right, so I'm going to go through the list of iron and gold bases. These are Mongol bases that are marked on the map. Okay, I'm going uh, north from south. There's Furuta Village. That's in the northwest corner, and that's a a small base. And uh, I'm also showing you the uh, survivor camp that has the trapper with the iron. So that's on the uh, northwest side. It's near a shrine on an island. And then as we go across the map on the eastern side there's a Yoki's Crossroads 
which is kind of on the east middle. There's the Traveler's Rest Inn, which is the great farming location for chests for supplies and steel. The old trading post, which is these are that's in the middle by the lake. And then the Ogo Wawa Dojo, which is probably the first big camp you're going to clear out. Since you kind of start from the survivor camp in the northeast corner. Uh, here's a no we're looking on the kind of western side western middle a Komatsu Ford is the trapper location where you can buy things And then the Kuta River Bridge is a Mongol base which has iron. Some of these have is only lootable. Some is a reward, uh, which is noted on the before you take it. The, uh, going back to Rushing Water Crossing, there people like to farm the the bears too. I have a video about farming the bears at Rushing Water Crossing, so clearing that base last. The Fallen Outposts it has a fast travel point. Two bears attack Rushing Water Crossing, which is in the middle of the map by the river. And the, the Stone Arch Crossing, uh, that's more towards the south, but it's on the middle river. It's south of uh, Rushing Water Crossing. Then the Salt Wind Estate. Is a Mongol base, a small one, and a bigger Mongol base is the logging camp where you'll get two gold. Okay, we've been there. And of course, we skipped the destroyed shipyard, right? That's where five chests are. Uh, but I recommend destroying it and farming the chest at the Traveler's Rest. Salt Wind Estate was uh, one small base I mentioned. Oh, and here's a base up here. No, let's see. The beachside camp is on the south west side of the island in Act One. And then the logging base. So there's two logging there's a logging camp, I think, and logging base, and those both offer two golds, and those are big uh camps. The other benefit of doing all these camps is that you're gonna Improve your stances because you kill leaders while you're there. And then there's the tangled crossroads on the southeast side of the map. Right, right on the coast is the tangled crossroads. And Asimo Bay. Don't go and attack Asimo Bay. I tried that. Um, before I did the quests and that I got killed immediately that's an auto kill for them uh, you have to wait for the main quest uh, that horde uh, and the wagon uh, just south of Kutu's fortress 450 meters south of Kutu's court fortress and then there's the secret stash of iron on the sibling rocks which is an island on the mid east coast near the kutu grasslands
if you're really clear in the map, then you could have an almost all the way upgraded katana, totally upgraded bows, totally upgraded uh, all your carrying things with the trappers, um, and you could have a katana just one level from upgraded and then the tanto totally upgraded. And then in Act 2, you're not going to really see a big improvement in your weapons because you did all the farming and you did all the clearing. You will get to see improvement in techniques and, and probably also your skill. And uh, you should be crushing it by the end of Act 1 if you do all this. Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. I'm Linus Wilson. We do tips and tricks for Ghost of Tsushima. Good luck, Samurai.